Since you finished editing Chess Magazine, how many um, issues did you do this thing of Chess Magazine? Uh, I think it was 224. <laughs> I think. I did it for 19 years and I missed one issue and that was when I had the flow. That's the answer to that question. So have you felt like you've been able to do a lot of more your, of your own projects since you stopped doing them? Well, yeah, I've been doing a lot of non-chess things as well, you know, and it uh, gives me more time. But um, I'm getting back to doing some chess projects now, yeah, books and um, a few articles and whatnot, yeah. Nice sense of freedom from the deadlines, which plague every med magazine editor. So you've done the story of your encounter with Fisher? Uh, yeah, I've done that. I've done that to death, I think. <laughs> Very memorable, though. Fisher didn't... Uh, you know, he, he impressed me. I did, he didn't disappoint me when I, when I saw him. He, was, yeah, he told, told you to move out of the way. I was honoured. I was honoured. Sure, Bobby, I'll move back. You know. <laughs> no, it's, you know, when you see some people in real life, they disappoint you, but not Fisher. And nor the other great players, actually. There were a lot of other great players at the time. They had charisma. They didn't disappoint me at all. People like the great Russians like Keras and Gligorich and Larson. They all seemed to be great. You know, human beings, they had a lot of character and well educated. Yeah. Are there any top players you don't like? From the past, you mean? Uh, In general? No, yeah, I don't no. dislike any of them. They all have their ways, you know. But um, that's a difficult one. I uh, can't answer that one. There's no because I didn't know them that well, you know, when I was younger. But there's a lot of them I liked. I liked Gleggerich very much. And um, as I say, uh, Fisher was uh, charismatic. There was no question about it. Perhaps like Carlson is today, really. Just his very presence generates tension. And it's like a magnetic personality. Yeah. Do you think Carlson's doing what for chess what Fisher did? Only even more so because he's not going off the rails or giving up. Well, the thing about Carlson, he's got to he's got to be himself. He's not Fisher, you know. And he's, I think he's doing that. He's just doing things his own way. Um, it's a different world, though, because in the old days, Fisher was attached to the Cold War, and it. It was just so big because of the political situation. Carlson's in a different situation. You know, you know I don't think it's, he's not got that extra bit of boost that um, Fisher had to, to worldwide publicity and fame. But I saw him at the candidates and uh, he impressed me. Yeah, he, he's a cool, cool, uh, cool customer. Do you think London's, again, it's kind of a centre of chess in the world? I wish it would be. Um, uh, I think it's the organisation. In the old days, we had some good organisers. I mean, um, we had people there that uh, did a lot of work for nothing. It wasn't money, it wasn't the only thing, and they had a good uh, spirit there. Um, but this uh, candidate was very well organised, but it, it wasn't actually organised by English people. It was organised by Mr. Paulson and the French. And, uh, so I don't know, it's up to them. But uh, I thought it was a fabulous uh, venue. It was very nice, it was cosy. Friendly, I would say. Nice, friendly atmosphere. A lot of young people organising it, and um, I was glued to it. I just—it's unusual for me. I, I stayed the full five, six hours, or whatever, just watching the players, people watching. It was wonderful. Uh, best event. One of, one of the most memorable events I've been to in recent years. Yeah. No, there are as many spectators as there have been in the past for big events. Well, it's a small theatre, yeah. so um, there was a limited capacity, but there was enough people to, uh, you know, fill the room. They didn't have to paper the house, as they say, fill it with anybody. There, there was enough people there to give it the atmosphere. It was nice. It was cosy, and um, you know, it was part of the scene. I think the people there they had computers and whatnot. Um, you know, but it, it was a whole thing. It just worked. So what books are you working on at the moment? I'm just getting back into it, you know, I've got a few books I'd like to reprint from the past uh, that I did, they're out of print for a long time, books on, um, hoping to get re reprinted on the old time, it's like Zuckertor and Chigorin, maybe Floor, you know, and um, I'm doing this book on Briar, which I stopped doing 20, 20 years ago, I never finished it. And I want to pick that one up again and get that done. It's a massive, huge job, that. But um, there's a gap in chess literature that needs to be filled, I think. Yeah, why do you like Breyer? And uh, what, who is Breyer? 
Briar was, uh, in a, I think it was around in the, before the First World War, and um, in the First World War and just after the First World War, so a lot of his writings were in newspapers, buried in the newspapers of that time, and they've not been accessed before or translated. And Briar was a rebel, he was a rebel, he was a revolutionary and iconoclast, no respecter of persons, and uh, he had his own theories on chess which led to the hypermodern movement, you know. Uh, so I think that there's a lot, a lot of stuff there, essentially, that's never been, you know, never been available before to anybody. And if it has been available, it's been available only in Hungarian, which is a tough language to read, you know. So it's a very valuable, it's a gap. There is a book already on Bra in German, but my book would be comprehensive. I would put everything in. So you're learning Hungarian? I'm sorry? Are you learning Hungarian? No, I'm not learning it. I've got uh, people that help me with that. Uh, that's beyond me. I, I'm, I've dabbled in other languages, but that's um, too difficult for me. No, but I'm fortunate in that a fellow helped me with a, a lot of the club member helped me with a lot of the Hungarian, and um, I've got some people in Hungary. They're very kind, and they've been helping me with the extra bits, you know. So, but. Um, <clears throat> I met Briar's granddaughter in London many years ago, which was a bonus, and um, so I'm very pleased to have actually met you know, part of his family as well, so that gave me. I'm looking forward to getting the job done by the end of the year. But you also taught yourself Russian to translate Russian? Yeah, enough Russian to, uh, to read, yeah, to read. It's, uh, Bordish once was asked this question, and uh, do you speak Russian? He said, it's, yeah, it's essential for a chess player, so I, I took note of that and learned a bit. Yeah, I get by in that. Uh, it's the books I like to read, not to talk it, but uh, I've got to read the stuff. And very important, and some wonderful books in Russian. Wonderful. Mm. Yeah, and um, uh, is the Boleslavsky book one of your favourite books? Yeah, the Boleslavsky book uh, was a translation, but it, was, it, was, it won the book of the year. Um, some people complained about that because it wasn't my book, but um, I actually did a biography of him and also uh, added a lot of new games because the book only went up to a set time, I think 1957, so I brought it up to date. And um, eventually, uh, well, the, the, funny enough, by coincidence, the year that book came out, uh, I met uh, Boleslavsky's daughter, who was well, he's married to was married that time Bronstein. So it was very nice to, to meet him. We went out together and all that in the social sightseeing trips and things. It was nice. So it's good to meet again a family, you know, getting to know the family a bit was very nice. But I like Boleslavsky because um, he was a big influence of Fisher in uh, theory, opening theory. He was the sort of teacher of Fisher for certain openings, like the Royal Oak Peasant, the King's Indian. So, uh, anything to do with Fisher interests me. I love Bobby Fisher. <laughs> Bobby Fisher inspired him to get to, to, to love chess, really, wasn't it? Well, when I started to play chess, uh, I learned from a library book, and in the same library, um, they used to get the chess magazine. And the first chess magazine I opened was Bobby Fisher's games from some tournament or other. So the first words I saw, and I wondered who Bobby Fisher was. He sounded like a footballer, you know. But uh, that was how I got interested in him. Yeah, the first magazine I looked at was 1958, and Fisher was uh, uh, qualifying for the World Chess, you know, the candidates to him. So he was big news. Yeah. So never since then I've been, you know, fascinated by him. I read everything about him. And, uh, Good and bad. What did you do during the Fisher Spassky match? Well, during the Fisher Spassky match, um, I was working on the uh, uh, hotline from Reykjavik. It was in those days we didn't have the internet. We had teleprinters, which were very cumbersome things, and they gave you the moves as they were played. It came through very slowly. It was a very tedious business, but we got the games. Uh, a sports agency in in Mayfair organized it and from from this Mayfair office it was like a nerve center and we distributed most to America to Europe and to the newspapers and that because we were the first people to get the moves and um, that was a, that was a 
quite a trump card. I enjoyed doing that. And the reason I got that job was from Leonard Barden, who had read my poem on Fisher. It was about a 200 line poem on Fisher. And uh, well, I guess that's, that's how I got the job. You know? What did you think of the comeback match? Yeah, I, um, I was. I didn't know about it actually. It's suddenly on the newspaper, I didn't get any pre-warning of it. And um, when I saw the first game, I thought, "Well, wow, Bobby is back," you know, because it was a fantastic game. I, I, oh, I was glad. I was glad. And um, the funny thing was, I asked some Russians about this. I asked a couple of Russian grandmasters, and they uh, they they didn't approve of it. They felt sorry that Fisher had come back because it destroyed his legend. But I didn't look at it that way. I was glad. That it, it was a, it was a match went on too long and whatnot, but um, it was great to see him back in action.